So should you pay yourself, your directors, your employees first in a business acquisition or not? And if so, how do you even do that? That's what I'm gonna share with you today. So make sure you stick with me until the end. I'm gonna share with you if you should do it, how you should do it, when you should do it, and if it's even needed for you to do it, or if and how much you can even take. So make sure you stick with me until the end. I'm gonna share with you all those things that I wish someone shared with me when I started in this journey. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Moan Pover. I'm here to help you buy your dream business or a few of them like I've done in the last few years. I'm here to share with you things I wish someone shared with me when I started. And I'm also the founder of acquisitions.com. Now, one of the biggest questions I'm getting from people who watch my channel, who watch my videos, who want to get into the space of buying businesses, right? They know that growing by acquisitions, that buying a business will get you to their goals faster, will get you to your goals faster. They understand that buying their competitors will help them to get there faster, but they're not sure on if and when they should pay themselves or their directors in the process of acquisition, right? Should they even pay themselves? If so, how much and when? This is what I'm gonna share with you today, so make sure you stick with me until I share with you all of those lessons. So the first biggest problem I see in this is that most people just don't know when they can even pay themselves in a deal, right? They think, hey, when do I even pay myself? When I just start in the middle of the deal, after I close the deal, only when I exit? Can I take money as an income, as a dividend, as bonuses? Most people don't know that, right? Now, obviously, when you just start in this space, if you don't have an existing business and you're just thinking about a sector, you don't have anything to pay yourself with, right? You have zero of zero. You can't pay yourself something out of nothing. People don't know if they need to pay their board, if they even need a board. Do they need to pay their board by the hour, right? Or maybe they board pay them to find deals, right? I see all those different questions that people ask me. Do I need to pay my board? Do they board pay me? Do I need to pay brokers to even see deals will the broker pay me after i close the deal or who even pay me will the business owner pay me or will i own the bank of the business and i can access the bank and take money whenever i want right many people just don't know that because they never had a business before which is okay i'm not judging i'm just sharing with you some of the questions that i'm getting from people they're asking hey do i need to pay a deposit on a deal if i don't have money where do i pay that money from right and if I buy the business, where do I even take the money from? Do I go to my accountant or lawyers to tell me how much money I need to take from the deal? So first of all, let's differentiate between periods before your deal and after you close the deal, right? So before you close the deal, ideally, you don't spend any money whatsoever unless it's money like driving to meet the business owner right like making phone calls. Maybe your phone is costing you some money. Maybe you send letters. Maybe you go to events. I show my clients how to find those deals without using any of their own money. I know people who spend a small fortune just to look at the deals. When brokers told them, hey, you gotta pay me thousands of dollars, I show my clients how to make sure they're not doing that. Or I know a lot of people who paid advisors thousands of dollars before they even looked at the deal or made an offer on a deal, right? And that's before, that's because you don't know the full process. You don't know what's possible in this space. You're new to this space, so people are taking advantage of you. They ask you for money before you have a deal or anything. You just have an idea in mind. So let's differentiate that, right? That's before you close a deal. Before you close a deal, you're not taking money home because you don't have any business to take money from, right? You don't own anything. You can't take anything out of nothing, right? And I'm emphasizing that because I'm getting, asked, I'm getting asked from people, hey, how do I get paid before I close the deal, right? You're not. Before you close the deal, you're not getting paid unless you have an existing business or a job that's paying you already, right? Before that, no one will pay you. No business owner will give you money just to look at their deals, right? So I hope that makes sense. And I'm just putting it out there because I had those questions. Now, let's think about the step after you close the deal, right? So let's say you close the deal. When do you get paid then? And that's when the time that you can get paid. You, your directors, your board if you have, your employees, that's when you get paid, after you close the deal. After you negotiated the deal, after you made an offer, after you did your due diligence. When you close a deal, that's the first time you can get paid. Right? There are basically three times you can get paid after you close a deal. First time is as soon as you close the deal. You can get paid if you raised more money for a down payment 
then you need to pay for your seller and for your advisors, right? So if you have accountants and lawyers, for example, to help you with your diligence, if you know how to get them on contingent fee basis, then you pay them at closing, ideally, some amount that will come from the business, right? So now you are the owner of the business and you can pay your accountants and lawyers for the work that they did for due diligence. Now remember, they helped you on due diligence after you had a signed LOI, after you had your offer accepted. They will not do the work for you before you made an offer. You need to know how to make an offer on those deals before the offer got accepted, right? They will do the work after that and you need to pay them. Now, if you have leftovers, you take that money at closing for yourself, for your directors, for your board, if you have, like I said, and for your employees, if you want to bonus them as well. That's the first time. Second time, now you're the owner of the business. It means if you bought 100% of the deal, you don't have to, you can buy less, majority, minority, it's up to you. Now you have access to the bank account of the business, right? Now, obviously, it's in your control. You can do whatever you want. You can take all the money out and shut down the business and liquidate it, right? It's all new. And again, it depends on the negotiation and deal you close with the owner. But usually, if you are now running the day-to-day of the business, you will take an income of that business, right? Like maybe you work right now in a job and you have an income, you will take an income from your own business just to have a tax sufficient way to take money out of the business. That's one way. Another way, and again, I'm not an accountant or lawyer and I'm not here to give you any legal advice. This is you figuring out on your own. I'm just sharing with you my experience. But when you own a business, if you run the day-to-day, you will take an income. Other than that, every quarter or every year, you can also give yourself some more money that you can take by issuing dividends or by giving you bonuses, right? Or there's other ways like getting consultant fees for yourself from a different company. There are tons of different ways you can structure where you can take more money out of the business if there's enough money in the business, right? Now, some people will say, hey, I don't wanna take any money from the business. I wanna keep it in the business. I wanna continue to grow it. I'd rather reinvest the money in the business to grow it faster than taking money out of it right now. This is your decision. You can take money out or not. I'm not here to tell you what you should do, right? But that's the second period of you taking money out of the business while owning it. So you have the first time, as soon as you close the deal, you can take some bonuses if you raised enough money or maybe even the business that you bought have enough money in the bank account that is enough for you to run the business as a working capital, plus you have extra money that you can maybe bonus yourself for doing the acquisition, which is very common. So that's the first one. Second one is while you own the business and the the third period is when you sell the business or went public and did an IPO. That's the large payday. That's the capital event, the large capital event you create for yourself if you sold the business, right? Now, many times people will say, and I suggest you that if you ever thinking about selling your business, really think about how much money you're gonna take on a regular basis in your day to day. Because every money that you're taking on a day to day, so you should think about it that every dollar that you take on a consistent basis right now when you run the business is $5 or so, depends on the multiples you sell the business at, that you can take it exit. So that's something you should consider as well with every dollar that you take for yourself. Now, every dollar and every acquisition that you do after that, you have the same process. You take some money at closing, some money while you own the business, and some money at exit even when you sell the business or go public. Now, when you hear words like pay yourself first when owning a business, is to remind yourself to always take some money out of the business while owning the business because you never know what's going to happen the business can have ups and downs and you want to make sure that you're taking at least some money to live from or have some basically better lifestyle from buying that business now it's your decision like i said every dollar you're going to take right now is a dollar you can take later every dollar you're taking out right now is a dollar you can perhaps invest in a better employee or someone who will replace you in the day-to-day if you don't want to be involved in day-to-day Right. So those are all going to be your decision as the new owner of that business, which is up to you on if and what you decide. I see a lot of mistakes in this field. People not sure when they can get paid or if and even they need to get paid. I know people who worked, they bought a business, they worked for a year in the business, they didn't pay themselves anything. So what they did is they bought themselves a a job that isn't even paying themselves. Think about it with yourself. Would you ever go to work in a job that wouldn't pay you anything? No, right? So why would you do it with a business that you're buying? 
That's why you need to know how to do your due diligence before you even buy a business, to know if that business can even pay you the amount of money that you deserve to get. Which is exactly why you need to understand the full process of closing a deal. A to Z with the nuances. If you're going to miss steps, you're going to find yourself with a business that just gave you a job that isn't even paying you. Is it even worth it? No. Our goal here is to buy yourself businesses that will pay you, not businesses that will give you a job that will just bankrupt you. Right? So you need to know the full process and it's going to be really difficult for you unless you have community that are doing the same things, unless you have support and accountability and someone to basically be your second set of eyes on every deal that you're looking at to make sure that you're not making those mistakes. Because if you're going to make those mistakes, you're going to just waste a lot of time, a lot of years that you just you can never get those back. But in the end of the day, it's up to you. It's about your commitment, your resourceful. It's about you taking the right action and just figuring out and investing in yourself so you can have those deals and own those businesses that you want to own. Which leads me to another big question that I'm getting from people, which is, okay, so I'm going out there, I understand how to get paid from a deal, but how do I even get the money to close those deals? Or how do I interview financial institutions that will give me money to close those deals so I can take some of that money home like we talked about in this video, right? So if you wanna learn how to interview financial institutions, exactly what to tell them, how to tell them, how to position yourself and how to approach them. This is exactly why I created this next video for you. But before that, if you didn't yet, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below if you understand now how to pay yourself and if you should pay yourself. And after that, go and watch this video next on how to interview financial institutions. Go and click here right now and I'll see you there in a bit.